Hello and welcome! This is Microsoft Flight Simulator and this is the Phoenix Airbus A320. And in today's episode I would really like to talk about all the uh, external lights that this aircraft has. I fly this aircraft for a living uh, because I've seen a lot of people being a bit confused as to when and how to use all these lights. Uh, so I'm going to be telling you how my company handles all of this, when we switch each light on and off, and uh, how to use them correctly, not to annoy other pilots, and of course, without confusing air traffic control, because some of them can be quite relevant uh, to ATC as well. Okay, so first I'm gonna talk you through each and every light, where they are and how they function. And then we're gonna go into when and how to use them correctly. Okay, let's get started. So let's talk about all the lights that we have. The lighting panel is found at the bottom left hand side of the overhead panel and consists of, in this particular case, of eight lights. Some aircraft may have a different configuration, but this is exactly what we have on the aircraft I work on as well. The first light here is the strobe light. Strobe lights are very bright lights on the wingtips. On the A320 series, you have four sets of lights, two lights on each side. They are now all done by LEDs and they flash in short succession on each wingtip. Then we have beacon lights. Beacon lights are red lights positioned uh, at the top and bottom of the fuselage. Next, we have the wing lights. The wing lights are actually positioned on the fuselage. They are so-called beam lights and they light up the leading edge of the uh, wings and the air intake of the engines. Next we have the NAV and logo lights. The NAV lights are two different colored lights uh, positioned on the wing tips of the aircraft. On the left hand side you have a red light, on the right hand side you have a green light. And the logo lights are positioned on the horizontal stabilizer of the aircraft to light up the uh, tail and show off uh, the logo of the airline. In the second row, we start with the runway turn of lights. These are positioned on the nose gear and uh, are the two outer lights on the nose gear. Should you do a walk around, they point uh, to the left and the right on the nose gear. Then we have the landing lights. Landing lights are traditionally positioned in the wing route underneath the wing. These are lights that fold in and out. On newer NEO aircraft, at least with uh, the airline I fly for, they are now integrated into the uh, wing leading edge. But uh, on the A320 CEO, as we have it here, they are retractable and uh, basically fold out from underneath the wing. And finally, we come back to the nose gear. There's uh, two types of lights. One is the taxi light and one is the takeoff light, both positioned on the nose gear and uh, both to be used for different phases of the flight. So when are we actually going to use all these lights and how are we going to use them? Let's start with the strobe lights. Strobe lights, as you can uh, see, there is two sets, which means uh, each has a backup. So if one fails, there's still one left, and that should tell you that these are actually quite important. Uh, so strobe lights are used whenever you enter an active runway. This is either for the purpose uh, of taking off or crossing an active runway. So every time you cross a holding point onto a runway, you switch on the strobe lights. Uh, they stay on until you leave the active runway. So if you fly, you switch them on. As you uh, enter the runway, you switch them off when you leave the active runway. They are not to be used during taxi because they are too bright and they could uh, dazzle other pilots. And as you can see on the Airbus, we have on, off and auto. Now auto means that the switch is linked to the gear suspension system. So if the gear is no longer compressed, the strobe lights will automatically come on and vice versa. When you land, they'll automatically switch themselves off. At my company, the default position is always auto. We never switch them off unless we power off the aircraft. 
and we do manually switch them on as we enter the active runway or if we cross an active runway. Beacon lights, also very important lights. Uh, the minute you switch them on, you are indicating to everyone around you that you are about to move and or start the engines. So at most airports, once uh, the beacon lights are on, nobody will approach your aircraft anymore. This is very important, so you need to ensure that all ground staff uh, is clear, all equipment is clear, that the chocks have been removed before you switch them on because at most airports, once you switch them on, they will not approach the aircraft, which means if the chocks are still there, then uh, that can get a bit annoying. They have to call you to switch them off again, etc., etc. So beacon lights are essentially a warning to everyone around you uh, that the aircraft is about to move and uh, start its engines. You, so you switch them on before you push back and they stay on for the entire time until you reach the gate the engines are switched off and uh, everything is safe and then you switch them off to indicate to the ground staff that they are able to approach the aircraft. Next we have the wing lights. Uh, wing lights, I've seen quite some different ideas uh, in terms of how to use them. At my company, we don't use them during the daytime, but we do use them at nighttime. In the winter time, we actually use them for the walk around as it helps us with uh, detecting ice on the leading edges and maybe on the engines. And we also use them during push and start during night ops because it helps the ground stuff to spot anything that's amiss during the push and startup procedure. Maybe worth noting, uh, this is not so much relevant on the A320, but on some Airbuses, the wing lights, they are very bright, they get very hot, and uh, they can be in a place where the uh, jetway actually connects to the aircraft. The jetway has like a rubbery band at the end to protect the aircraft, and if that's directly positioned over the wing light, it can get very hot and actually catch fire and we had a crew information about this to be very careful with the wing lights because they can actually set uh, an air bridge on fire so just bear that in mind with certain types of aircraft nav and logo lights so nav lights as i explained earlier have two different colors and the idea is that if you see those colors uh, in the night sky you can determine if an aircraft is flying towards you or away from you that's why they have two different colors so red on the left green on the right so if you see exactly that a red light on the left and a green on the right you know the aircraft is flying away from you if it's the opposite the aircraft is coming towards you logo lights are just that they're there to uh, light up the fin uh, we use logo lights all the time because they give us an additional large area that is very bright and makes us more visible. I know some airlines are not so keen on that, but at my company, logo lights are seen as part of the safety feature of an aircraft, not just in terms of advertising. Now you have two switches, one and two, and this is simply because for each uh, light you have two different LEDs. So if one fails, you just use the other one. At my company, there's no procedure if you should use one or two. You can use either, but obviously if one of them doesn't work, you switch to the other one to make sure you are visible. Runway turn of lights, again, company specific. We use them every time, even during the daytime, for each and every takeoff and landing. It's procedure to switch them on together with these strobe lights. I find them very useful because they light up the runway edges and especially if you land uh, in poor visibility, it can be a really great help in finding your exit of the runway. So at my company, we switch on the runway turn of uh, lights when we enter the runway and we switch them off when we set flaps zero. Landing lights. Uh, the name can be a bit confusing for some people. They're not used for landing as such. Uh, I mean, they are, but for other things as well. Again, company specific. We leave them in the retract position during taxi. When we reach the runway, uh, and wait for our lineup or takeoff clearance, we put them to off. And what this does is it unfolds the lights, but they are not switched on. 
and uh, when we enter the runway and when we cleared for takeoff we switch them to on which means the lights actually come on they stay on until 10,000 feet at which point you move them to retract and then when you pass 10,000 feet again during the approach you switch them back to on once we leave the runway <coughs> after landing we retract them and then they stay retracted until the next flight nose lights actually fairly straightforward you have two nose lights one is slightly smaller and not so bright and one is slightly bigger and very bright uh, so we only use the smaller one for taxi hence the name taxi light so you can use this during the night time we use it all the time even during the daytime the taxi light is always on uh, once you are cleared for takeoff you move the switch to the takeoff position and that will give it a bright light helping you to see better on the runway these lights come off when we select flap zero together with the runway turn of lights a bit of a side note when you taxi and you are being told to give way to another aircraft it is courtesy amongst pilots to switch off the taxi light uh, this indicates to the other pilot that you have understood that you give way to him and that you are now going to stop taxing so that's how we communicate with one another to show the other pilot that we are giving way once he's passed we switch the taxi light back on and that uh, helps us carrying on with the taxi maybe an interesting side note there are two lights that are switched off automatically when the landing gear is retracted and those are all the nose lights and the runway turn off lights so should you forget them don't worry the aircraft switches them off automatically once the uh, gear is retracted and finally something um, I, I don't think this is simulated in Microsoft Flight Simulator all LEDs on the Airbus have a self-diagnosis and when they reach the end of their life they start flashing blue so when you do the walk around and you see some lights uh, flashing blue that means you have to inform maintenance because that light is uh, reaching the end of its life cycle and needs to be replaced this is very helpful because some of these lights are actually mandatory for night flights and uh, it would be silly to have to cancel an entire flight just because an led doesn't work we don't want that so we change them before they fail and that's why they have this self-diagnosis i don't know if this is also uh, present on the boeings i would assume so it makes sense but uh, most definitely on the airbus we have that so i no idea if this is simulated i doubt it but if you use the phoenix a320 and you ever see something blue flashing then you know what it means it means that light is about to uh, say bye bye so we finish with a very quick summary uh, the minute you enter the aircraft you switch on the nav lights the minute you move the aircraft you switch on the beacon lights uh, if it's nighttime it's not a bad idea to switch on the wing lights to help ground staff see the aircraft better during uh, push and start when you enter the runway you switch on the strobe lights the runway turn off lights the landing lights and switch the nose lights to from taxi to takeoff when you set flap zero you switch off the runway turn off lights and the nose lights and when you pass 10,000 feet you can switch off the landing lights that's the summary i hope uh, this made a <laughs> made a bit of sense i know it's uh, it sounds complicated but once you've done it a few times i don't even think about this anymore it's it's it just comes natural uh and yeah and uh, hopefully this makes you flying a bit more realistic good thank you for your attention thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed the video and i look forward to seeing you in the next one until then all the best bye bye